All right, let's, uh, we kind of left yesterday about halfway through an example, maybe a little more than halfway through an example. Let's, uh, let's draw it. And we'll try to finish it up. I think I can't, didn't I kind of leave it up to you to finish? Yes, no? All right. So this was J and K and L and M, and this was N. All right, what'd they tell you? They told you, they told you it's a rectangle, all right? So you know a bunch of stuff about it if it's a rectangle, don't you? You know you got all four right angles right here. That's one thing you know. Um, and what else do you know? You know the diagonals. What do you know about JL and MK? We learned that yesterday. They're congruent to each other, okay? That's only true about a rectangle, okay? Regular parallelogram, the diagonals aren't equal to each other, okay? Only on a rectangle. Everybody understand that? Uh, but everything else is true about a parallelogram is true about this. The opposite sides are equal, right? So JK and M ML are equal. JM and KL are equal. They're parallel to each other, okay? Uh, the diagonals bisect each other, and they're equal to each other, all right? So here's what they do. They tell you that JL, let's just write it right here. JL is 5x plus 2. And they tell you that KM is 7x minus, or yeah, 7x minus 6. All right, and they ask you to find MN. So MN is what they're looking for. I'll put question mark. Is that all right? So that's uh, what we're trying to find. So JL, so that's this whole thing right here, is 5x plus 2. KM, where's K? That one right there is 7x minus 6. Well, what did I just say about the diagonals of a rectangle? What are they? They're equal to each other. What is JL? JL is a what? Of the rectangle. It's a diagonal, isn't it? All right. And what is KM of that rectangle? It's a, another diagonal. And what's true about the diagonals? They are equal to each other. So what are we going to do with those two things? Right, equal them to each other. Set them equal to each other. All right, so this is what we do. Let's do the math real quick. Subtract 5x from both sides, I get 2x. Add a 6 to both sides, I get 8. Divide both sides by 2, I get 4. Now, it's not my answer. Okay, what do, what do they ask for? Mn, correct? I don't even know what Mn is is they don't tell me anything as far as like in terms of x or anything do they but i could find what do you think the whole entire thing what's the whole entire thing mk or km right and what is that that's this isn't it so let's take that four and do what to it plug it in very good plug it in so i'm just rewriting this 7x minus 6 i'll just write it up here 7x minus 6 so we just plug it in and we'll find the whole entire thing why do I want to find the whole entire thing? They don't even ask me to find the whole entire thing. What's the purpose of me finding KM? Exactly right. So MN is how much of MK or KM? It's half of it, exactly. So I'm trying to find what KM is, and then I just do what to it? Just take a half of it, okay? So let's put it in here. What is uh, X? It's 4, right, minus 6. That's 28. Minus 6 is 22. Now, what's 22? This whole thing right there is 22. What am I asking to find? Mn, which is how much of that? Half of it. So what's 22 divided by? <laughs> I wrote down the answer. I got so excited about it. 22 divided by 2 is what? It's 11. So Mn, that little bit right there, is 11. How do you know it's half of it? Because the diagonals bisect each other. Okay, on any parallelogram. And is a rectangle a parallelogram? It is. It's just a special type of parallelogram. It's a parallelogram with four right angles in it. Okay? Yeah, that's not much different than we've been doing pretty much all year, is it? Except it's just a different picture, right? Different figure. We didn't know until yesterday what the diagonals do on a rectangle. So it's a different figure, but the math, the, the style of problem is pretty much the same as we've been doing. Okay, now let's do another one. This is a theorem. I'm not gonna write the whole thing down, especially because I only have three minutes left, but we are gonna do a rhombus. Uh, 
What's a rhombus? A rhombus is a quadrilateral with what? Four equal sides. Very good. Uh, do I want that? Yeah, I do. All right, so we'll just kind of make it look like this. And let's make it look like, does that look like all four sides are about the same? Pretty close. Good enough. I'm just gonna, I'm not going to like show you why this is true. Sometimes I would if I had time, but I'm just going to do this. We're going to do the diagonals again. Now, are the diagonals of this equal to each other? Yeah. Yeah? Come on. Let's think of what I talked about. Just talked about like five seconds ago. What was it? The diagonals of a what are equal to each other? A rectangle. Is that a rectangle? No. Are the diagonals equal to each other? No. All right. But they do what? They do bisect each other because a rhombus is a what? Parallelogram. Good. A lot of stuff to remember. Once you get it straight, it's not that hard. All right, so it's a rhombus, so all four sides are equal to each other. Here's what the theorem says. The theorem says, I'll tell you what, just let's take a look at it and get a gut instinct. Look at the red lines right here. How do you think they intersect each other? And it's not quite perfect, but it should, <laughs> it should look a little bit better than that. I'll just tell you right now. They are perpendicular to each other, okay? So they are perpendicular to each other. That's actually the second theorem. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit, but that's okay. All right? So the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. That means they form a right angle. Everybody understand that? Yeah. All right? It only happens when it's a what? A rhombus. I'll write that down. All right, so what's true about a rhombus? The diagonals are perpendicular, okay? They're perpendicular. Here's another thing that they tell you. It's, so it's two theorems about a rhombus. Let's do this in yellow. Two theorems about a rhombus. Look at the angles. Again, what did I know about the, it's a parallelogram, right? Any rhombus is a parallelogram. What do I know about the opposite angles of a parallelogram? They're equal to each other, okay? But here's something that we didn't say before because it was never true. Now it's true. Check this out. Look at this angle right here, and look at this angle right here. What does it kind of look like they might be? Again, gut instinct. It looks like they're equal to each other, doesn't it? And they absolutely are. Again, we could go through some proof and show you why it is. Just not going to because of time, but that's our second theorem. It's actually the first theorem. The second theorem was the perpendicular thing. But the theorem says that the diagonals of a rhombus bisect two opposite angles. You hear what I just said? Here's a diagonal. What does it do? Bisect it. What does that mean, bisect it? It means they, it splits that angle in what? In half. In half, okay? So what if that whole big angle, I'll tell you what, let's do this. What if this whole big angle right here was, uh, I don't know, let's say 60 degrees, make it easy. What's this little tiny angle right there? It's 30. And what's this little tiny angle right there? That's also 30. How did I know that? By knowing this angle. Because the two big angles are equal to each other, correct? And if I bisect it, so what's this little tiny angle right here going to be? 30 and 30. Watch this. What's this big angle? Hang on, hang on, don't leave. What's this big old angle right here equal to? It's 60? Look at it. It's an obtuse angle. There's no way it's 60. You should know it. It's 120 because it's 180 minus 60. It's 120. So what is that angle right there equal to? 60. 60 because it's being bisected. Check it out. 60 and 30 and 90 add up to what? 180. So it all works, doesn't it? Okay, we'll continue this tomorrow.